This is a quick video. It's a follow-up on the Toolpath Editor video. It came up in um, in the same thread that the previous video did. And I, I wanted to use it to highlight some new functionality that you may not know about in um, the Drill Toolpath. Now this came out a few years ago, so it's not like new new, but a lot of people don't know about it. So I have a simple part I created just for this little video and a drill toolpath, obviously. Probably not the most efficient, but not the least efficient either, depending on which axis is the fastest. So very, very simple drill toolpath, just drilling these guys out. Obviously, this transition move would be a problem. The question on the Mastercam forum was, where is the jump height editor? Um, for those of you who don't know, this is an old, old, old functionality. It goes way, way back. And it used to be that you could edit the individual points in the toolpath editor to edit what size these, uh, or what position these drill points went back to. Because, you know, if we look at this thing from the side, the ones in the middle would have to go up the highest. These ones would have to go to about here, and this one would have to go to about here to clear. Um, so the way you get there, it's, it's mentioned in the forum post, but you could go into geometry, you could right click on one of these guys, and uh, you could change parameters at point, and that'll allow you to manually edit and tweak all these things. But I don't care about that. That's tedious. It's not automatic. I'm lazy. I want my software to figure this stuff out for me, um, which luckily Mastercam can do. Now, the trick to this, though, is to make sure that you're referencing the solid face. You could add the you could add the solid as a collision feature, but if you're already using all of those handy dandy solid selection things that you can do in drill, this is literally automatic. So check this out. I'm going to go to my linking parameters, and so parameters, linking parameters, and I'm just going to come down here to use automatic linking. Check that on. Yeah, psh, whatever. I don't care about the warning. Green check. Look at that toolpath. What just happened to these to this toolpath? Well, it looked at the solid itself and the moves that it calculates between the between the moves. It's looking at the solid and clearing by whatever your retract amount is set to. So if you came in here and you said a retract of zero, you're going to get this drill basically right on, you know, I'm going to go back, slow this down. You're getting that right on the part. Obviously, you don't want a retract of zero because <laughs> that would gouge your part. Um, but what that's doing is it's adding sort of a clearance zone around around your part. So if you put in a half inch clearance, it'll do it. And this is basically functioning just like the chamfer mill toolpath, um, the model chamfer toolpath, sorry. So if you're familiar with that, that's the way the clearance works. It's an absolute position. It could never be below the below a collision. So basically it'll never allow you to wrap it into the part, but any number you type above that, well, it'll be fine. So if I put in like a five inch clearance or something, you'll see that clearance move at the beginning and end. Two inches though, that was below my part clearance amount. So it, you didn't, you always got that instead. It's like the minimum, just like model chamfer. So there you go. Hope this helps.